Hey, what's going on everybody? Steve here, Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you with another video with my good friend Eric. Eric has been buying and selling cards, baseball, basketball, football, over three years. He uh, graduated from Rutgers Business School. At around 18 years old, you started buying and selling cards. Mm -hmm. Since then, how much have you done in sales? So in the past couple years, in the past three years, it's really picked up. I've done comfortably over a million dollars in sales. I, I started to get into things in uh, 2015, but in the past three years, um, you know, things have really picked up. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And you know, we had you on a live show recently. I'll, I'll link to that down below, but a lot of people, and like the most common question that I get, and it's funny, before we met and connected in Miami, I always thought to myself, you can't make money with sports cards. They're all outdated, they're mass produced, so on and so forth. But after you know meeting Eric and talking to him and he's been showing me results, he's been showing me sales that he's been making, and I've just been like mind blown of the opportunity that's still present and moving forward into the future. Let me ask you a question. This is a, uh, a loaded question, but is it still, you know, is it actually worth still investing in sports cards in 2020, 2021 and beyond? A hundred percent yes. And I'm, through these questions, I'm going to tell you guys all why, you know, this is so relevant and it's only getting bigger and stronger and picking up steam, you know, as the weeks and months go by. A lot of people say, you know, it was the 70s and the 80s. The prime has already passed. The opportunity is gone. Let's start to kind of talk about, you know, to the people who are new to this game or maybe who used to trade cards and now they look back at the older cards and they're like, these aren't worth any money. Mm -hmm. What's the deal, man? Like, is the, has the prime passed? Is now a great opportunity? You know, you guys might know Gary, uh, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. He's been talking about it and going crazy on his videos, podcasts. What's happening right now, Eric? Okay, so the prime is now. So the bad part is actually already passed. So what I mean by that is cards through 1970 to 1999 Almost all of them, except for some basketball, it, they were massively overproduced at that time and they're worth almost nothing. You can't imagine how many people come to me be like, oh, I got these baseball cards from the 1980s and I, me, yeah. Yeah, and I immediately say they're worthless because they were so massively overproduced. And cards from like the 50s, 40s, 30s are, are like the golden era. They're, they're worth a lot of money, not that easy to find. And then now we're getting into a time where sports is getting huge. People want to be financially connected to these players and be financially connected to sports without gambling and you know losing your ass. So prime is now like I'm. It's just going, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's no stopping it. Is there any stopping sports? Probably not. People love it, and you know, along with sports cards. Yeah. Uh, be sure to watch the live show that Eric and I did recently. I'll put a link below, but also be sure to go to rakeandprofit.com forward slash cards. Why do you want to go there? Because we have a free workshop. Talks about everything you need to know to start a card business, how to grade cards, the biggest tips for getting started, how to get started with a little bit of money, investing, rookie cards. We have so many videos that we've created. It's 100% free. So go to rakeandprofit.com slash cards. Also over there, we're going to keep you updated when we, when we come out with you know more uh, content, more live shows, live videos. And also we talk a little bit about the mentorship that Eric's offering mm -hmm. as well. We'll cover that at the end, but let's keep going. Investing in minor league players. Is it actually work, worth investing in minor league players right now? And are those different cards versus like the Bowmans and like the professional players? Is this the same products? What's the deal with minor league? Okay, so when investing in minor league players, I really only suggest in buying Bowman Chrome. That's the best baseball card product. And man, minor league players are very volatile. One injury, a couple bad games, they'll really swing up and down. But that goes to say, you know, higher risk, higher return, just like, you know, in stocks. So if you have a player that's in the minor leagues, and I'm going to give you an example. Luis Roberts, a minor league, minor league player at the moment on the White Sox. And, you know, he's going to be called up to the majors maybe this year, prob almost, almost positively this year. And if he comes out and hits six home runs in 10 games, his base rookie card is worth about $600 right now. It will literally double over a week. So investing in minor league players, there's huge room for profit, like massive rooms for profit. Um, you know, and players will go up in value if they get called up from the double A to the triple A, um, you know, single A to double A, if they, get, if they get put on the top 100 minor league um, 
prospect list um, that they come out with every year. So there's a lot of ways for minor league players to climb the ranks. And, you know, a lot of these guys you may have never heard of, like guys like Wanda Franco, Julio Rodriguez, 18, 19 year old guys who, you know, are not household names, but, you know, Wanda Franco's rookie card, he's a prospect on the Tampa Bay Rays and it sells for $700. So there's a lot of money in people that you may not even know. We wrote this down because uh, this was a comment that was on one of the, uh, the, the posts that I put out on our video. And someone said, wait, people actually buy these things? And uh, the person ended up elaborating and saying, like, what do you sell cards for? Eight bucks, nine bucks, $11? Mm -hmm. Do people actually pay good money? I know you've got some cards behind you. Maybe you could pull out a random card and show, <laughs> show them what you paid and what it sold for. But surprisingly, a lot of these cards, certain rookie cards, if you get them graded, there's different products, so on and so forth. That could go for not only hundreds, but thousands of dollars. So what are you, what are you gonna show them right now? Okay, so this is a Trey Young blue prism. You and love you know, Trey Young. I man. do love Trey Young. He's and upset, he won't stop talking about Trey Young. I love day. Trey Young, I think he's undervalued. But uh, you know, this is not even an autograph card. It's like I always talk about, basketball's just getting bigger and bigger. And you know, I paid eleven hundred dollars for this card, and I actually recently just sold it for sixteen hundred. So I mean, there's so wow. much money in these things, and they, you know, they do so well. How much money can you actually make if you get a player right? So we were talking a little bit about investing in minor leagues. I'm not sure if you guys can see all this text here. Um, but also maybe like a rookie card or a minor league player or somebody who maybe they've been in a league for a couple of years, regardless of what sport it is, and they're starting to take off. Like if you get a player right, Eric, and you're like, you, you've done your research, you just have a feeling they're going to pop off. And mm -hmm. one of the videos we talked about in the workshop, again, be sure to sign up. You talked about how there's always like this point where like it goes up a little, down a little, and then it like explodes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always go up and down, but there's like this ex explosion point yeah. <laughs> that you mentioned. So it's like it's like a boiling point, like you know, yeah. it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And like I'll give you a good example, like I have a buddy out in California that invested in Luka Doncic over the off season, big. He was buying all his silver prism PSA tens at about three to four hundred dollars a pop. I actually sold one to him for about four hundred dollars. And as soon as Luka Doncic's season started, it hit that boiling point and he started playing very well and it went up and each one's worth about 15, actually $1,700 now. What? So, you know, that's like four or five extra turns. How many did he buy? Uh, hundreds. Not like a lot. Are like, you serious? Yeah, like fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000 worth. So like he oh made like, you know. Hundreds four, of thousands of dollars. Yeah, he's made a killing, you know. So, I mean, if you get a player right, you know, you're gonna make a lot of money. So what's, what's the most money you've ever made, Eric, getting a player right? Can you share some stories or examples? Yeah, no, for sure. So I'm not the biggest person in terms of investing and holding long term, but I can give you some examples. So I'll give you two examples. One was last year, I actually bought a ton of Glaber Torres, maybe about $20,000 worth, um, right before the playoffs started. How many I, cards is that? Um, it was a bunch of his Bowman Chromes. Maybe it was about 12-ish cards. I had some blues in there, some colors, and I bought them all, and I was just prepping for the playoffs. For whatever reason, I had a hunch. I think he, I thought he was gonna have a good playoffs. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Glaber Torres, even though I'm a New York Mets fan, I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> and he had a big playoffs, he performed super well. He was actually one of the only players in the Yankees that was playing well, I got very lucky. And I, I doubled my money in about a month. I sold everything for about 38,000-ish. So just because he was had a big playoffs, once again, this is a business built on hype and emotion, and there's no bigger hype and emotion than when a player is playing well in the playoffs. And you know, those same cards now are worth like 55, 60,000. So maybe I could have even, even held longer. And then I invested in lowering guys too. So I invested in a guy, his name was Brandon Nimmo, and I bought a bunch of his rookie cards for like seven, eight dollars each. And I sold them the next year when he was playing pretty well. They went up to about 20, 25 dollars. I invested like maybe like Three thousand wow. dollars. I saw a return of like eight thousand. So oh you know you can do it with lower end, higher end. But yeah, those are my experiences investing. That's cool. In players. And and what are, what are the biggest changes that you've seen over the years from what two thousand? You started what like 2015, 2016, but you really started you know kind of taking off over the last three years. What are the biggest changes you've seen in terms of the values of cards? You know how many people are interested in buying cards? The demographics. Like what are the changes? What's the landscape? Mm -hmm. what's it what's it look like so when i got into sports cards in 2015 mike trout's rookie card was about 1700 dollars, give or take and people were like oh my god like the bubble is gonna burst like this is crazy a, sport, a rookie card should not sell for this much and that same card to this date is worth ten thousand dollars so i've just seen the market absolutely explode uh you know like i always talk about this sports is global or american sports is globalizing the nba 
Asia loves the NBA, you know, I talk about this all the time, guys like LeBron James now, who were once celebrities in the US are now global icons, you know, people all over the world is wearing, are wearing his sneakers from Nike, so, with all that combination, you know, I used to only ship cards in the U.S. Now I'm shipping cards to the Philippines wow. and to China, you know, Beijing, Hong Kong, and even Australia. Australia is really big into basketball as well. Um, so that's just globalizing, and it's just getting so much bigger and bigger. And now's such a great time to get in because sports cards is something where, you know, I talk about this, but saturation is good, right? The more mm. people that get in the business means the prices of everything is going to go up because that means, you know, there's that same supply, but there's a higher demand. So, you know, sports cards are just getting bigger and bigger with everything going on. Cool. Hey, thank you so much for coming on. For sure. If you all enjoyed this video, do us a big favor and hit that like button, comment, subscribe on this video. If you have any questions for Eric, leave a comment down below. But if you really want to, you know, learn and take your business to the next level and get into trading cards, whether that's minor league players or, you know, just your favorite players, or you just want to learn about this, make some extra money, go to rakeandprofit.com slash cards. You're gonna get a whole bunch of videos that we created that you're not gonna be able to find anywhere else, 100% free. Also, you'll be able to learn more about Eric's mentorship program. It's something that's very limited. He doesn't offer it to a ton of people. So depending on when you watch this video, it may or may not be available. But if it is, we'll let you know about how you can book a call with Eric or his team to be able to learn more about his mentorship program. And if we're ever going live or doing, you know, free live videos whenever, we'll send you a, you know, a link so you can be the first person to, to watch it. So any final words to the people, Eric, who, you know, are skeptical or maybe they want to get into this? Um, yeah, I would love to, you know, talk to Steve, book through with the link he's going to give you. Uh, you know, I offer a tremendous mentorship program that's full of like live, real human one-on-one -on -one support and, you know, you get your questions answered all day, every day. And, you know, I love talking about this stuff as I'm sure you could shore with the passion in my voice. But um, yeah, that's all I need to say. I mean, sports cards are just getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, get in now, get in the gold rush, you know, now before it's too late. Cool, so we'll see you guys in a free workshop, rakeandprofit.com slash cards. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.